rent is going up. And a lot of people are finding themselves surprised. Here's someone that I actually know. They were renting a house and the house was, I believe, 2,500 bucks per month. And they moved in just before the pandemic. They were recently hit with a thousand dollar increase in per, per rent. So they're getting ready to move and they're finding it very, very hard to find something comparable for what they were paying. This is a scenario that's going to repeat itself uh, throughout America. You're going to find a bunch of people who are going to be forced to move. You know, there's a lot of talk about this great resignation. What about the great move? A lot of people are going to have to move because they cannot afford these increases in rent. So why is rent going up? Let's look at, once again, the pandemic. We can go ahead and blame the pandemic for many, many different things. First of all, when the pandemic started to really, really roll, you saw rents decrease across the country. You saw a lot of rents just drop. They slashed the rates. And <clears throat> this is something that historically doesn't happen. Typically, landlords or owners of buildings will maintain the rents and they'll offer free rent or something. But during the pandemic, this presented a different scenario. So literally in San Francisco, Los Angeles, rents were slashed. Now we're coming out of the pandemic and rents are going back up. And many people who moved into these pandemic rent based places are not prepared for the hike in rent that is coming. Uh, I've been doing some research. A lot of people we're seeing like serious hikes. We're seeing not like a hundred bucks a month. We're seeing 500,000. Uh, one person in California, they rent increase is going to be 1500. So they got to move. That's $18,000 a year that you were not paying for rent. <clears throat> and this is one of the issues that happens with money. Let's say you have a job, right? And your job pays you a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. And then they wanted you this like, Hey, we want you to take a pay cut of 50% to do the same work. You're not going to do that. You're just like, cause you've been accustomed. You know, I have this expression luxuries once tasted become necessities, right? So you're not going to do that. So same thing with rent. If you're in an apartment for 2,500 per month and they talk about now this apartment is going to be 3,500 or in some cases 4,000, you're like, I was in this same apartment and I was only paying 2,500 and you want me to pay a thousand dollars per month more with no increase in value. And that this is what it's about because once you get used to paying a certain amount of rent, and then they want to like, you know, going up like a hundred bucks a month. That's not a biggie. That's kind of expected, but to do a $500,000, uh, that, that, that's just too much for the average person, even if they have the money. Cause see, for some people, this isn't about money. It's about principle. I was in this apartment that was paying 2,500. Now you gotta tell me I gotta pay 3,500 and there is not going to be any dramatic improvement in my living situations, I'm not going to do that. So they're going to move. So a lot of people are going to move. Now that's the smaller round of rent. That's the smaller session because you know, there, there's a lot of people who moved into an apartment or a house or something during the pandemic and they got a big discount. That's just part of the reason that rent's going up. Let's talk about, all of these landlords that had tenants that were in their properties, not paying for a year, in some cases, two years, and they couldn't get these people out until recently when they lifted the eviction moratoriums. So a lot of people 
like uh, I have a friend who's a real estate person. She has 15 houses and fortunately for her, the renters in her houses and 10 of her houses kept paying rent during the pandemic and they kept paying it. And she had five renters who didn't pay rent and she couldn't get them out. So she is going to raise the rent on those five houses. She, you know, for the houses that she had the 10 people in that were paying rent and she didn't get behind, she was able to pay property taxes, pay her mortgages. But these five people caused her a lot of pain. So she is going to raise the rent. Now believe this, and they, they this is, uh, these houses are three bedroom, two house, uh, two baths. They're like 1,500, 2,000 square feet. She's gonna raise the rents to $2,000 per month. Cause she finally got these people out of her houses because you know, she was so frustrated and the people in the houses were like, yeah, we're ready to start paying the rent again. And she didn't want them. She wanted them out because she told me she figured that three of them could have kept paying rent, but they chose to not pay rent because it was a get over tactic. So hopefully those people put that money in the bank account and saved up because if they were just tricking off, man, that's just bad. So this is another reason that rents are going up. A lot of landlords, a lot of landlords were in a very bad situation because many and my friend, she's like, she did not take forbearance on her houses because once you're in forbearance, you cannot get another mortgage. You cannot buy another property. You, there's many, many things that were not talked about in the forbearance. And if you are a real estate person, forbearance wasn't in your best interest if you were trying to go out buy more properties and also it kind of makes sense like if you're in forbearance and you're saying hey i cannot pay my mortgage why would you go to another bank and get another mortgage it makes no sense right so she didn't take the forbearance and these five renters literally drained her emergency fund so she just told me, she says she's got like 1500 bucks and she says, God forbid, if anything happens with one of the properties, she says, um, you know, she, she doesn't like doing HELOC. She said, I'll be forced to do a HELOC on the property to, to, to pull out some cash on the equity. But the, the, the pandemic, people who were in apartments, people who were renting houses, who were not paying their rent, created a lot of economic damage for a lot of landlords, many, many landlords. So this is another reason that rent is going up. Now, th this is the thing. Rent is not going to come down ever again, unless we have another pandemic or something like that. So these new rental rates are going to be consistent. Like they're going to go up in 2022 because you got a lot of landlords who are trying to recover lost ground. So once again, if you like, or cause currently I'm a renter, you know, I rent an apartment and I don't really foresee cause this, this is interesting. When I was coming in here, this building was, not, they had six units coming up this year. When I got in, they had six that were going to open up. So the occupancy rate is pretty high and the rent's pretty high. So I don't really see a dramatic increase in rent in next year if I choose to stay. However, I do understand that this is the luxury rental market and it's a little different than the normal rental market. So I had challenges getting in here because this is something that a lot of people were doing because the real estate market was so hot several people sold their houses and moved into moved into these places so that was a something else because i don't really foresee us having another real estate market like what we had because it was artificially produced the pandemic created this scarcity of real estate created this limited supply so you can expect rents to go up again in 2022 and you can expect rents to go up in 2023 because I feel that we're going to have a recession in 2023. However, this recession will not be fueled by real estate. It will be fueled 
because you know i'm going to do a separate video on the supply chain shortage but we've got a lot of funky indicators in the economy now i know this is going to sound strange we got a recession we're going to have people with higher unemployment and rents are going to be ridiculous and why would rents be ridiculous you need a place to stay that's what they're going to be going on you know when you rent an apartment or a house you're not renting it because you want to you're renting it because you need a place to stay so this is um they're going to be let's just put it shortly they're going to be able to get that money they're going to be able to get that money because people are going to need a place to stay and this is one of the things that is going to mess up a lot of people in income danger zone number one if you are a low income earner this is about to get terrible if you're a first time homeowner home buyer trying to buy your first house this is about to be terrible so if you're in that lower economic strata of fifty thousand dollars a year or less uh, life is about to get very, very difficult in terms of buying a house, renting a house, or even renting an apartment. Now, you might be able to get some cheaper rent in the hood, but my little research indicates that even those rent prices are going up. So rent prices in the normally low rent districts are also going up. They're not going up as fast as they are in the nicer rent districts, but they're still going up. So. 2022 is going to be the year to squeeze. And if you are in that lower economic income strata, it's going to be tough, man. I know of another person who was renting. Her rent was fifteen hundred and her landlord just came there and said rent was going up to two thousand. And this is what's funny. She's been in that place for six years. And essentially what happened was the old landlord sold the property to a new landlord and the new landlord is raising the rent. So this is one of the things you're going to see for people who are uh, buying multifamily, who are buying apartment complexes. You can expect the rent's going to go up <clears throat> and the rent's not come. Like I said, the rent's not coming down. It is not coming down. It will go up. I feel you know, <clears throat> rent this year has went up 17%. Rent normally goes up two to 3%. Rent in 20, from 2020 to 2021 has gone up 17%. So next year is probably gonna go up 5% and then it's gonna kind of level down because once again, you cannot have these dramatic increases in rent and prices and because you know so many people are priced outside of the market but 2022 if you are of the low income nation if you're of the low income situation uh, my, my heart goes out to you because it's going to be tough it's going to be really really tough and you know if you're you know if you're making two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year and your rent goes up a thousand bucks that's a hit that you can absorb but if you're making thirty thousand dollars a year and your rent goes up five hundred dollars which is six thousand dollars a year that is twenty percent of your income that's not a hit that you can absorb so what we're going to see is even more polarization between the haves and the have-nots because it's it's about it was already bad it was already really, really bad, but it's about to be get ridiculously pronounced. You're gonna have this kid, like there's a kid here. He's like 25, he lives here and he drives a Ferrari. So you're gonna have that guy and then you're gonna have John who's married with two kids who makes $30,000 a year who is struggling to put food on the table. The, the polarity, the polarization is going to be so distinct and crisp and sharp. Um, I am just sitting there because like uh, we recently had a holiday party here and um, I'm, I'm, these folks are not feeling any pain up in here. They're not feeling any pain. So you're going to have that segment of society who's not feeling pain 
and what's going to happen with the lower economic strata is going to grow. So we're going to have a, you know, from marketing standpoint, if you want to create products and services to serve people in the lower economic strata, you will be dealing with a growth market. Because one of the things that, you know, when you start a business and you want to have your marketplace or demographic, you want to make sure the market is growing. You don't like one of the things that happened, like when I was a kid, there was these bikes that were literally everywhere. These Suzuki, these ninjas, these Kawasaki bikes. And literally the sales of those bikes stopped because the demographic that was buying those bikes aged out of the aged out, they aged out. So, you know, from a business standpoint, for many people who want to build a business that is going to serve the lower economic strata, whatever kind of service, whatever they need, if you that's going to be a growth segment. It's going to be a huge segment. It's going to be a you know, I estimate our population is 330 million, right? I feel that this segment will comprise of about 150, 160 million people. So we're talking about half of the population base is going to be in that situation because from income standpoint, because we only have 160 million people working and of that 160 million people working, 80 million make $30,000 a year or less, 80 million. So these are, we're talking about fantastically huge demographics and marketplaces because I was wondering why all of these um, for the unbanked chime um, there, there, there's so many new products for the unbanked and this is someone who doesn't have a traditional checking account there there's so many new products where like once again this is something I've learned in my car rental business I was unaware of until I got into this car rental business that they make debit cards that you can turn on and off. I didn't even know that because I don't use my debit card. I use credit cards. So only way I use my debit card is to do a transaction at the bank or to pull money out of that bank's ATM. That's it. So I had no clue that you could turn your debit card on and off and this is a whole certain new behavior that I've been exposed to because I have people who were in a car and they would have their debit card off and they will not communicate to me until after I send a message like hey I am um, declining your request because your credit card doesn't work and it's like oh I just wanted to make sure I got it because once again in this period of 2022 of rent inflation of um, the things that are going to happen with monetary the emerging recession that I feel is going to hit the end of 2022 the beginning of 2023 if you're in that income danger zone number one fifty thousand dollars a year or less uh, 2022 is going to be a very hard year for you because inflation is not going to stop. We've seen inflation with used car prices. We've seen inflation with rent. We've seen inflation with food. We've seen inflation with gas. These inflationary pressures are not going to abate in 2022. They're going to continue on. I fully expect another increase in rent in 2022. Because once again, we're, we're, we're leaving this pandemic economy and we're moving back to the real economy and i've said this before there's going to be a lot of economic pain and you know i've got people who are leaving comments who are challenging uh, like my video the murder rate is surging they're challenging this it's like you know and they're leaving all these namby pamby com comments but you can go to the fbi statistics you can go to the national crime statistics you can google murder rates and you will see that murder rates have increased in the year of 2021 30 percent so what are we going to see with this rising rent with these inflationary pressures and all this we're going to see a lot of pain. We're going to see a lot of desperation. And this is one of the reasons that crime 
is about to, you know, crime escalated, escalated, crime escalated in 2020, it escalated in 2021. We will see an even greater escalation of crime in 2022 because what's going to happen? First of all, rent is too damn high, Jimmy McMillan. Gas prices are too high, food prices are too high, and they're, they're, people have a breaking point. There's only so much money you can pull out of your situation if you're in danger zone, number one, of less than $50,000 a year. There's only so much you can do, and what's gonna happen is gas, food, rent, is going to price a lot of people out the market. You're gonna see a dramatic increase. You know, van life has been very hot for a long time. I believe in 2022, van life is gonna be white hot. I feel that van life is going, you know, van life, simple living, you know, um, there, was, there was this girl, she was living in, it's not a tent, I forget the name of it, but it's a circular, a erectable building that has a, a yurt, a yurt, I believe that's what it's called. You're gonna see van life, like if, here, here's a little game for you. If you can create conversion vans, you can turn vans into livable habitats, that's gonna be a growth industry in 2022 because there's gonna be people who are gonna be, who, 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 who can read the tea leaves. They're like, things are getting kind of bad but I got $5,000 over here. I can buy me a conversion van and I can live in a van and I can keep working my job and I don't have to worry about rent. <clears throat> That's gonna be a growth industry. Van life, converting vans, because a lot of people, and once again, you're gonna have people who are not so super pressed, but once again, they're looking toward the future and you're gonna have people who are gonna leave their homes, they're gonna leave their apartments and they're gonna get a van. They're gonna be living in a van because there's going to be a big, big move to simple living because simple living, and um, once again, I have a different philosophy on that. I have a different um, mindset on that, but many people, uh, let's talk about the mindset. I feel that you should create the life that you want so you can live how you want. I don't feel that your wallet should dictate how you live, but that's me. Many people, their wallets are very much going to dictate how they live. And that's going to be very pronounced in 2022, 2023, and 2024. So you're going to see a smaller segment of society that get, will get ridiculously rich. And you're going to have that lower economic echelon of people who are going to continue a downward spiral and essentially the most impacted people in this downward spiral will be the children of these people the offspring of these people so like with rent i don't see rent going down ever again for maybe like until the next pandemic so what you're going to do is rents are going to jump up and then they're going to go up a little bit more in 2022 and they're gonna stabilize because once again, you cannot keep, like Zillow, what happened with Zillow? Zillow bought all these houses, they overpaid for these houses and now they're getting ready to take a big L because they bought houses that the market could not sustain. And this is why, once again, if you, I'm very much thinking about creating a business to serve these lower economic strata because that the market, the marketplace is going to be bananas. It's going to be ridiculous how many people are going to be in that segment. And this rent and this inflation, which is artificially produced, is like I said, I said this before in the earlier in the video, it's not going to abate. We're going to see these inflationary pressures happen in um, 2022, 20, 2023, 2024, even while we have a recession, we're gonna still see these, these inflationary pressures. Because right now I have five renters who are like, hey, could we, I pay you cash app. And they, they're working all types of deals. But once again, like I am not going to break my contract with hire car because if I enter into one of these newfangled deals, uh, I, put, I expose myself to a lot of risk because they're looking at how much they're paying per week and they want to reduce that 
which I fully understand, but their way of reducing it leaves me wide open with no insurance on the vehicle. Uh, yesterday, I had a vehicle looked at $7,200 worth of damage. The car only cost me eight grand. So I feel they're gonna total that one out. And you know, I cannot be in a position where I have no insurance on these cars. And that, that's what they're trying to like. They're trying to say, like, well, we can do it this way and I can get insurance through Uber or Lyft and that's not something I'm gonna do. I have a hard enough time with, you know, I've had some people who paid me who've never been late, but at any point that can change. So I'm not gonna be dependent upon you to pay for some insurance and also pay me. Because if you don't pay your insurance and then you wreck that car, guess what? Guess who's ass out? Me. So I'm not doing that. But guys, just lock, you know, if you're in that income danger zone, number one, um, I got some advice for you. I got some advice for you. Um, you need to dramatically start, you need to increase your income. That is the only thing that's gonna protect you. This is why I don't worry about inflation. I always look for a way to dramatically increase my income. I don't know if you can start an eBay business, you can start doing Uber, you can start doing Lyft. You need to start dramatically raising your income before it gets too late because these landlords are not playing. These landlords, especially the landlords who got abused during the CARES Act, who had a tenant living in their property who could have paid rent. But because of the CARES Act saying that you don't have to pay rent and your landlord cannot kick you out, a lot of these landlords got abused. I mean, they got deeply abused and they're angry. They're really, really angry. So they're not going to be, you know, and this is something that happens when people abuse you. Like I've had 18 people. I'm going to do this uh, whole special Kill Switch Chronicles. I've had 18 people arrested this year. And in the beginning, I felt bad because someone had my car and they wasn't paying me and they got pulled over and they got arrested. I felt bad. Now, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. Actually, I'd be trying to I'd be trying to set them up. Because one of the things I do is I'll send them a message. Hey, you're late. You need to bring the car back. They will ignore me. Ignore me if you want to. Fine. You ignored me. You have my car. You're not paying for it. You're going to get arrested. And I will file that police report in a heartbeat. And then uh, the last one, she got arrested at four o'clock in the morning because I told her to bring the car back. And I told her I left explicit instructions her nothing. Next day, filed a police report and two days later she was arrested. So where I am with the car rental business and these people getting arrested, I don't care if you get arrested. I just simply don't care because it's a simple thing. You have my car. You know you're supposed to be paying for it. And then you have my car, then I contact you and you ignore my messages and I can, I know you're driving my car. I don't care. And that's where many of these landlords are. They've been abused. They have been wrecked. They've had their emergency funds exhausted. They've been stressed out. They don't care about the renters anymore. And this is an attitude that's going to permeate through 2022, 2023, because a lot of new or rookie landlords, this was a, a tune-up call. This was a wake-up call that, hey, this th these things can happen. And these landlords are not playing. It's all about business. It's about making that money. And if you want to be someone's property and not pay them, and some folks are going to use some gangster tactics. I know someone, I'm not going to mention his name. He's a landlord. And um, he got those people out of his properties. <laughs> Let's just say he showed up with an offer they could not refuse. He got these people up out their properties because 2022 is going to be such a rough year. And like, like I said, do not expect rent to go down ever, ever again, unless we have another pandemic. 
you know, it could be, you know, this, this pandemic was a once in a lifetime event. So this, this is not something that comes along every year, every 10 years, every 20 years. But these people are not playing. They're just not playing. So if you want to be renting someone's place and get behind on the rent, you do so at your own pearl. And once again, here's a message to the people in income danger zone number one. I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like to not have money. I know what it's like to be hungry. This is not a good thing. It's not good at all. However, just like I had to learn, when you are suffering, the world doesn't give a damn. There is no Superman. There is no Wonder Woman. There's no Aquaman. There's no Justice League. There's no Batman. There's no Iron Man. There's no Spider-Man. There's no one that's coming to save you. No one. You need to create your own cape, throw it on your shoulders and be your own superhero because what we're going to see in the next five years is going to be crazy. Right now, we have a lot of people who don't want to work. I mean, and this is, you know, I'm going to do a video about this, but a lot of people don't want to work. And this is creating a lot of issues. And what this is going to do is spur automation. Automation was going to happen anyway. It was going to happen anyway, but it's going to happen much faster. Just kind of like with this pandemic, like, you know, vaccines normally take forever to develop. This vaccine produced an accelerated rate to develop these vaccines, right? Well, this pandemic and this large number of people who don't want to work is going to create an environment of accelerated automation. Accelerated. You're going to see so much acceleration. Like, remember the movie Minority Report? and Tom Cruise was in this automobile factory and there was nobody in there. It was just robots and uh, an assembly line. That's coming. And you can either be the producer where you are on the assembly line or you can be the worker who's getting a pink slip because I feel, and you know, I'm, I'm a little mixed on this. I'm a little mixed on this, but autonomous cars and autonomous trucks I still feel that they're 15, 20 years away. However, in this environment, they may cut that time in half because there's gonna be a big push. Like once again, if you can get an autonomous truck, oh my God, you can get a truck that drives itself you get rid of the mandatory time that they have to sit down. So this truck can literally run 24 seven, 24 seven. You know how much money that will make a trucking company that if they had a truck, a fleet of trucks, 10 trucks that can run 24 hours a day. So like I said, I feel that the autonomous trucks and cars are 15, 20 years away. However, just like with the rapid production of the vaccine, we can see the rapid implementation of autonomous trucks and autonomous cars. And once we get autonomous cars, Uber, Lyft, it's over. Once they get a workable, viable autonomous car situation, where they can just have this car. Once again, this car is going to run 24 seven. It doesn't have to take a break. It doesn't need vacation. So let's say the car cost them 20,000 and the software for it to be self-driving. It's five, 25,000. That car can now drive three times as long as a humor driver. You, you see what I'm saying? So the autonomy, the autonomy, automation and the scaling of automation is about to be bananas like I, I, I'll kind of lift up my uh, curtain how can I make seven figures as a one-person business uh, my assistant she had some family issues so she had to move back to Florida so it's just me automation 
there ain't no way I can do this without automation. And then uh, next year, I'm planning on hiring some people for the car rental business, but I like I have a whole nother plan that I'll be talking about. And for those of you who are looking for the Kill Switch Chronicles, those will be at Hustlers Kung Fu, so they will not be over here. Uh, this channel is just going to be strictly about their broader economy and social issues and stuff like that. So all that stuff's going to go to the other Hustlers Kung Fu. But um, 2022 <clears throat> is going to be a rough, rough year if you're in income danger zone number one because literally grocery bills are increasing two to four hundred bucks a month depending upon the size of your family gas is going up rent's going up all these things are going up they're not going to come down they're not just like once again i had to learn that no one's going to help me and I have to do my do things on my own. And this is a lesson that many people are going to learn. Uh, there will be some success stories out of this, but there's going to be a lot of pain, a lot of pain, because I know someone else who's moving because her rent went up 500 bucks per month, six thousand dollars. She just said, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. So <laughs> once again, if you are a single person, male or woman, and you have your own place, you live by yourself, and you're able to maintain, the hobosexuals are coming for you. The hobosexuals are coming for you. Because, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's going to be ridiculous. It's going to be ridiculous. So let me know your thoughts and opinions. And also to everyone, I've kind of taken a break, but I'm going to start off again soon, probably right after Christmas, because I got a lot of things for 2022 that I'm going to be dropping. I need to send out that email to my people. But hey, let me know your thoughts. What's going on? What's your rent situation? Are you in the place where your landlord raised your rent? Let me know in the comments. So that's all I got for you guys. I will talk to you in the next one.